Yes people, hope you're all good, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, I'm Liam from Good Block Outdoors. Now this week's episode starts directly on top of the Grade 2 listed Huenden Viaduct. We're out on a quick wild camp tonight. Fingers crossed I'm actually going to be able to find somewhere to pitch directly underneath where we stood now. I've got some banging food to cook and I'm going to take you guys along with me. The clouds are looking pretty grim and the cows are lying down. So I guess that means the rain's due. So we better get under this viaduct and start looking for somewhere to pitch up. Huendon Viaduct is a Grade 2 listed structure and was built between 1881 and 1884. The viaduct was built by the Great Northern Railway to link the industrial towns and cities of Bradford, Halifax and Keighley. It remains one of the highest viaducts in Britain, standing at 124 feet. It required massive foundations of 62 feet due to shifting sands. To give you an idea, that is half the actual height of the viaduct. It is 343 metres long and consists of 17 arches and was built using local stone quarried in Cullingworth. The first train crossed in 1884, but sadly the line closed to passengers in 1955 and the track itself removed in 1964. The viaduct has since been reopened to walkers, cyclists and horse riders in 2005, exactly 50 years after the last passenger train ran over the route. Well, I'm not sure what to do now, because obviously I planned on camping underneath the viaduct, but it's just full of cows. Proper moody cows as well. Oh, mate. What a kerfuffle that was. So I went full it along the top of it, dropped down to the right, and then I started following a little path underneath. It was just full of cows. And they were all kicking off, mooing. And there was nowhere that I could find. So I walked all the way back across the viaduct, back to where I started. And then I've dropped down at this side. I don't know if you can quite tell, but the grass is really long. So that tells me there's no cows in this field. Hopefully. Unless it's one big bull and he's not made his way through all the grass yet. But we're under the viaduct anyway. So before I find somewhere to pitch, I'm going to check this place out good and proper. I want to see some big fences around where I'm pitched <laughs> because there's no way I'm keeping with cows. Right, so I think I've more or less found my spot. And by spot, I mean we're under, I think the third or the fourth arch or span, whatever you want to call it. Now this does have to be a little bit of a stealthy one because just round there there's actually a farmhouse and that is not far away at all so I'm going to have to stay sort of in this little corner here there's a path that way and a main road that way but they're not going to be looking over here so it's all good I think I'm going to pitch up my tent and get settled down Now, unless I've been a lazy git during the editing, you look up. Guy lines. Now, unless I've been a lazy git during the editing, you'll have already heard some form of voiceover telling you a bit more information about this viaduct. Because I'll be honest, I haven't got a clue about it. I'm not even 100% sure what the exact area is that we're in. Hey, Siddy, where am I? Uh huh. You're at Wishing Well Farm, Hayworth Road, Bradford. Wishing Well Farm? So it reckons we're in Wilsdon, BD15. I think today I've actually decided I'm scared of cows, to be honest. I didn't know I was till today, but when there's a big group of them, man, big heifers, I aren't getting trampled to death. No, oh, thank you. Right, do you know what it is? I got set up, I'm gonna have some banging food outside, enjoy the nice open air, and the, oh, I nearly swore, the midges are here.
That's it, everybody in, everybody in, everything in. Batten down the hatches again, get the bloody mesh closed. So on the menu today we've got sweet chilli salmon, some peppers and some Singapore noodles. Can you believe that salmon were £5.50? What is going on? Do you know what I've forgotten? My pan handle. What am I going to use? We're going to say maybe a fork, but... Mm, that's not going to... So I'm cooking inside my tent with no pan handle. Not ideal, to be honest. So would you say this is classed as a stealth camp or what? I'm not sure. I think the only thing I'm trying to be stealthy from is bloody cows. So I'll give this a good clean. And then I'm gonna cut my peppers on it. Use it as a bit of a chopping board. I don't know why I brought a tray with me this time, but I'm glad I did. Right, let's get these peppers cut then. So there's not much getting away from how sketchy this probably is. Lighting the stove in here. Got to be done. Man's got to eat. Decided this is gonna have to be my pot holder. Nah, shit. Right, change of plan. I'm just gonna use the boiling pan. There's no way I can use that frying pan without a pan holder. Far too dangerous. Not ideal, but should work. Right, peppers are more or less done, so I'm just going to tip them out. I'll put this salmon in. I've chopped it up. I'll cook that salmon and then I'll add the noodles and then I'll add the peppers back in. Looks like bloody tuna now. Let me tell you what the secret ingredients is. A bit of sauce from Taco Bell. That'll do for me, you know. I'm not a fussy eater. Well, it wasn't a bad bit of scran, that, really, considering the issue with a frying pan. I cannot believe I forgot that pan holder. Never again. It's the first time I've ever used that titanium pot for anything other than boiling water. 
I've never done any cooking in it before. Normally it's just for making water for brews or for like dehydrated meals or whatever. And now I've burnt the bottom of it. There's loads of noodles. So I look forward to scraping that and cleaning it tomorrow. <laughs> oh, and I don't know if you've noticed, but we've lost daylight already. That's the problem with coming camping after finishing work on a midweek camp. Finish work, by the time I get home, got my stuff together, got changed, drove up here. It's kicking on half six, seven o'clock, by the time I found where I was gonna pitch. And before you know it, the daylight has gone. And let's be honest, what's happened to summer? This July, it's just been raining constantly, really. And I feel like I am well overdue a trip to the Lake District. It must be like six, seven weeks since I've been. It might even be longer. So I need to get back up there. Oh, in fact, yes. Guess what I've got? If you know, you know. And if you don't know, get to know. Yeah, boy. Muller Corner, Mississippi Mud Pie. Did you know they stopped selling these for about 15 years and they finally brought them back. They're exclusive to Asda. And I actually had to go to three different Asdas before I found one that had some in stock. I am buzzing. I bought about 10 of them. <laughs> I am way too buzzing over a yogurt. That is the elite level of yogurts. Right, I'm going to scram this. Right, it's fully pitch black out there now, so... I'm going to call it a night and get some shut eye. It's been a long day, so I'll catch up with you in the morning. Peace out in a bit. Wow. Rainy bastard. So from, I'd say, half past one, two o'clock in the morning onwards, it's done not but rain all night, which I don't mind. It's a nice sound on the tent. But obviously it just makes packing up that little bit more of a task. And it's proper leaking, this thing. You get some big splashes coming down. So it's looking like another beautiful British summer's day. Let's get this tent pack down and get on out of here. Right, that's one lunch and two packed up. Got my bag on, all my stuff. I'm just gonna carry my tent like this because it's really wet through. 
I don't want stuff on inside of my bag getting wet. Just noticed that. But anyway, leave no trace. Right people, the main road is there next to me. I need to walk up that road 10 minutes or so and I'll get to my car. So a good time to wrap this episode up. Thank you for watching. Make sure you hit a like, drop a comment, hit subscribe. Watch one of these videos up here and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out in a bit.